afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RVs with Big Bo at Parkway RV Center. We're going to do a type of camper that I don't get to do very often simply because there's just so very few of them around on the market today, and that is a used destination trailer. Now, I know traditionally my destination trailer video views are not as high as a fifth wheel or a travel trailer or toy haul or something like that, but for those of you who are looking for these that knows what these are, you know how hard they are to find used. Um, I currently have four of these in stock. And by just having four used destination trailers in stock, one there, a couple over here, I probably have more than 98% of the dealers in the United States in stock as far as used ones are concerned. And you can't really find them new. And today we're going to showcase one of them. It is a 2017 Crossroads Hampton. 400 FL and for those of you not familiar the Crossroads Hampton is definitely more the upscale destination trailer and Destination trailers are what some people call park models. I've heard them called mini mobile homes I've heard them called live-in units Whatever you want to call them guys. I mean, they're just a they're a a full-time designed towable camper um, They're not really a park model because real true park models are totally different than this. Uh, this is something you can still tow without permit, without wide load oversized permits. Um, it's 100 inches wide, so it's 43 inch, 43 feet long, two slides, weighs about 11,000 pounds. So this is technically something you could still tow with a pickup truck, well, a heavy duty pickup truck. And it's got its own built-in water systems, its own built-in uh, heat and air systems where a park model is normally 12 to 14 feet wide Normally you have to have a separate heat and air unit and they do not have holding tanks or plumbing systems You have to have all that added Destiny uh, a, a park model is more or less a mobile home a, a smaller mobile home Where well, this is basically the same thing as a travel trailer technically, but with a few uh, upgrades to make it designed more for someone to live in or more for the full timer. And of course, you know, the size being the main thing, you know, the average RV is not gonna take a 43 foot travel trailer to the lake for the weekend, getting it into a site and all that stuff. These are made to pretty much take somewhere and leave it. And uh, this one says 43 feet long, 43 feet, four inches long to be exact. Tongue weight's about 1800 pounds. And guys, we do offer, um, we can help you arrange delivery and set up. I've got a great company we partnered with that we can put you in touch with. If you need full delivery and set up, they can do education. They can help level it up. They can do pretty much anything you want them to do. Um, I mean, they can even cut down limbs and trees to get it into your spot, whatever they need to do, guys. And we can put you in touch with them. They can get you a quote on delivery. Uh, quote based of course on where it's going how many miles and what all services you need them to do Once they get the camper there and we'll put you in touch with them now if you just need a simple and you're local you just need a simple Unhook uh, Without all that our guys can do that just contact us for a quote on that but um, This is 17 Crossroads Hampton two big slide outs and it's a front lounge. It is a single bedroom floor plan and I do have other floor plans available. I'm gonna do this Salem Villa later today. Uh, Cherokee Riverside, I think one of these, I got two queen beds, floor plans. So definitely go to my website, parkwayrvcenter.com to see information about the current used tra uh, destination trailers I have in stock. But like I said, this is definitely the nicest one I have as far as amenities and what it costs new. Uh, I looked some of these up on RV Traders. The new, some of the new Hamptons are over $100,000 new. So as far as destination trailers, these are one of the best um, as far as being the most luxurious. And uh, like I said, 43 feet, four inches long. It does have 50 amp electrical service. Does have an onboard 70 gallon fresh water tank. Does have sliding glass door. These are better insulated than your standard travel trailer. So you can be used for extended use if you are staying in extremely cold climate, you can underpin these just like a house trailer to give you better insulation. You do have two entry doors. You do have a 10 gallon gas electric water heater. Sliding glass door, which is really nice if you're permanently set up somewhere. You can build you a deck going up to it. If you've got somebody in a wheelchair, you can put your wheelchair ramp on the deck. 
and um, let's look inside. I got a little tight right here and I apologize, but the outside looks great. And as we step inside, wow. <laughs> I mean, amazing. No smoke or pet odors in here, guys. And now I'm just running on 15 amp power off my small generator, so I can't run the ACs. This unit does have two ducted roof airs, does have a huge furnace, fireplace, television, ceiling fans in here and in the bedroom in the back. Have a pick up game of football in here if you wanted to. Wow. Um, solid surface countertop, stainless steel, residential style appliances versus just a regular camper appliances. I mean, you still got a propane stove top and oven, but it's a four burner with a warmer on the bottom. You do have a microwave, just over the range microwave. You know, another uh, feature of a destination trailer, you do have a large residential all electric refrigerator. You know, these are designed for everyday use. Contrary to popular belief, some of y'all may not know this, but an RV two way refrigerator freezer or three way is not designed for everyday use. Now, they're good for, you know, just recreational use where you use it a few times a year, you know, a couple weeks here, a couple weeks there, or a weekend here or there. But for as far as 365, seven day a week use, they're not designed for that. Big pantry. And they don't hold as much food as this electric one. This electric one, in an hour, you plug it into power, run it off a generator, an hour it's ready to put food in it. Holds twice as much food as half the cost to replace. This sliding glass door it makes it easy to load furniture in here, load big ticket items, or if you ever have to replace your fridge, something like that. That whole door can come out very easily and come back in. Like I said, you do have a fireplace that is set for the effect right now. It's got a remote control, but it also has an auxiliary electric heater. So you'll actually heat this whole kitchen and living room area. You know, if you, if you didn't want to use your electric heat or use your propane heat, now, if it gets below freezing, of course, yes, you want to use your propane heat. It does have two 30-pound bottles on the front. Obviously, if you're set up somewhere permanently, you want to get your 100-pound bottle, so it gives you plenty of propane capacity so that you can run it without having to go fill up your bottles all the time. 15,000 BTU ducted roof air. For your main unit, your auxiliary unit is a 13.5 that's located in the bedroom. And they're both ducted into the same system. And you can also use the cool jet features on either one of them or both if you just want to cool a certain area off. Really handy for the winter time. Uh, does have sleeper sofa and theater seating. Now you can swap those around if you want to see. Uh, I put the sofa in the front, put theater seating there so you can see the TV a little better. One thing I will point out, they have removed all the factory blinds and they put the really nice wood blinds, but it looks like at one time they might have had a, uh, a dog or something in here. And it doesn't smell like it. I said there's no pet odors. Now, it doesn't mean I haven't had it in here. But you can see you may have to replace some of the blades on some of the blinds. Um, which I'm pretty sure you can, re you can just buy those replacement blades. Or just buy the new blinds for it. Or just leave them like they are. That's up to you. But, I mean, there's no dog odors in here, no pet odors, and I'm very sensitive to that because I'm not a smoker and I don't have animals in the house. So, I'm it, it, when I smell it, I am pick up to it pretty quick because that's something I'm really sensitive to. Um, but, I mean, the carpet looks good, and there's no carpet in the main walkway. It's all in OEM like it should be. Countertops look great. Like I said, they are solid surface. Nice cabinets, nice tall roof. I mean, this thing's got a huge tall roof. Well, these are tall campers. So you don't get claustrophobic if you have to stay in it for a long period of time. LED lighting, so if the power goes out and you're running off your battery, it's going to last a lot longer running the lights. Vent fans, I mean, wow. We haven't even looked into the bedroom bathroom yet. They have added this right here, and this looks like a combination... So this is pretty much a couple's camper, even though it can sleep four, and you've got tons of space in here for air mattresses and pallets for unexpected guests. 
So, I mean, you pretty much, just, the, your imagination is the limit on how many you can sleep in here if you had to. Uh, this right here is a, um, so they've added, which actually looks pretty cool. And I was going to take that out and just put a regular table in here and chairs, but I kind of like that because it takes up less space, but it can still sit two people. I'm going to leave it in there. Plus it gives you a shelf and that's kind of like a combination table for two and desk if you need it to be. So with a plug in down there for a computer or whatever you need it to be used for. So that's kind of neat. So I'm going to leave that in there. I like the hallway through here. It kind of gives you a residential field, crown molding. And in here in the bathroom, we've actually got a very nice size shower. Vanity area looks good. Until we haven't cleaned it yet, but <laughs> got a skylight, even though you really don't need it because this, this roof's so tall, but it's got it. Not much you can do about it now, but <laughs> medicine cabinets. Uh, you do have a porcelain RV toilet, nice, fix, nice feature. And even though it's been added, it does have a very pretty late model um, washer and dryer combo. It's a ventless dryer too, so there you go. Looks like that little, and all this is is just a tape. It's not even a, a batten strip. They don't even use wood batten strips anymore on the walls. It's just a tape. That somebody's gotten too close to and rubbed off a little bit. No big deal. But it is used, guys. I mean, as nice as this camper is, it's, you know, half price of a new one. And it's, what, six years old? So, I mean, it's not going to be new. But please don't expect that. There's no such thing as a new used RV. If there was, why would anybody ever buy new? Uh, rear bedroom with a King Island bed. Like I said, it is set up for a couple. There's your second AC. It's, it can be ducted into the system or you can open the cool jet so you can just cool the bedroom off only. I should have turned those lights on. Sorry about that. Got a large closet in the back. Big closet. You can see, guys, I could just turn the light on. <laughs> Big closet. Uh, dresser at the foot of the bed. Do have a uh, place for a large television. If you wanted to add one later on. Second door to the outside, which is pretty much an emergency exit. But if you got to get middle of the night and leave for an emergency or if heaven forbid something happened to your camper, that, that that's a nice safety feature to have. I would rather have that than one of those pop-out emergency windows, even though I know if <laughs> adrenaline takes over, if something happens, which hopefully it never does to anybody, but I mean, trust me, it, if it if it's bad enough, I'll get out either way, but I'd rather step out a door than fall out a window. <laughs> and um, yeah, pretty nice, guys. 39.9 for 17 Crossroads Hampton 400 FL includes our major systems inspection. So please listen closely, guys. Of course, you know, nobody guarantees everything to work on any used, uh, used RV, and they don't even guarantee everything to work on a new one. Oh, they may say it passing, but if you ever read the fine print on a brand new warranty, and they don't. And back to the latest thing now with these new manufacturers is passing the buck when they have a major claim on a new RV, which is a lot of those happening right now since the pandemic has lowered build quality on these newer RVs. Um, but basically, the you buy a new one, of course you spend you know, 80, 90 grand on one of these new, plus fees and upsells that we don't charge. And let's just say something major happens, say your frame gets warped or your tongue breaks or something like that, then Crossroads will say, well, you need to go to the frame manufacturer or your refrigerator goes bad. Well, you need to go to Whirlpool. Whirlpool says, no, you need to go to Crossroads. And Crossroads will say, no, you need to go to Whirlpool or you need to go to the frame manufacturer. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Until finally, you've got a camper that's been sitting for months waiting on somebody to say they're going to pay to fix it. And you get disgusted and just pay for the repair yourself. And that's what they kind of hope you would do to begin with so they don't have to pay it 
Um, that seems to be the latest thing right now. And I've heard it from multiple people. Uh, so guys, you know, of course, you know, any RV you buy, you're going to work on. So you might as well. So why buy new? Why don't you just buy used for half price? And we'll still guarantee all the major systems to work. And this is what we guarantee to work on it for $39.9. So please listen carefully because this is what we guarantee to work. And everything else, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's part of buying a used RV. If, if it doesn't work, it's going to be up to you to fix it or not fix it. We're not going to fix it for $39.9. Okay. First thing, of course, we're going to work, guarantee to work at the time of sale is your main things is going to be your slide out we're going to check your slide out and not only just make sure it comes in and out several times but we're going to make sure everything looks good on the slide out make sure it seals good motors work good and all that um second thing we're going to make sure both your acs get the operating temperature we're going to make sure that your uh plumbing systems are all good you know we're going to check water pressure Check your water heater, make sure it gets hot on all modes of operation. We're going to make sure it gets hot water everywhere it's supposed to be. Make sure there's no plumbing leaks. If we find any problems with any of these major systems that we get that we check, we're going to fix it at no additional cost to you. All of this is included for $39.9. Uh, we check the refrigerator, make sure it gets the operating temperature as well. Uh, we check the propane system, make sure there's no propane leaks, all that's good. And, uh, of course, we check steps, make sure they work. Power, uh, we check the tongue jack, make sure it works um, correctly. And all that's included for $39.9. So, again, guys, please listen carefully. You need to do one of two things if you're going to buy an RV. And this is, should be common sense for any RV you buy, new or used, from a dealer or for sale by owner. So this should be, this should be automatically the way you should handle buying an RV anyway, not just here, but anywhere else. And like I said, even if it's for sale by owner, a dealer, even if it's brand new, you should do this right here. First of all, you need to come look at it. And yes, I know that's inconvenient, guys. I know everybody can do everything online now from buying a house to ordering a pizza. But <laughs> sight unseen. But guys, you, anytime you buy something used, you won't look at it. You know, you don't buy a used car without looking at it, a used house, a used boat. Why should an RV or camper be any different? So, first of all, you need to come look at it because pictures, and I'm just telling you this from personal experience, pictures and videos, yes, they help tremendously. I know that. That's why I do this. But my intention is not of doing this is not to replace you coming to look at it. In fact, that's the furthest thing that I ever wanted to do. And when I started doing this back in 2010, doing these videos, and I even told that, I said, I never want people to not come here and look at them. That was my number one fear of doing this. I want you to come look at it because pictures and videos help, but actually stepping foot in it, walking around it, sitting on the couches, laying on the bed, standing up in the shower, opening drawers, opening cabinets, picturing your stuff in here, you and your family using this camper, because size perception can be a lot different when you're looking at it on screen than when you're looking at it in person. You might come, you know, you hear 43 feet, all right? You might come look at it and say, this is bigger than I really need. But once I look at it in person, it sounds good on paper. When I look at it in person, it's too big. Or I need something bigger. Or I need a fifth wheel. Or I need more slides. Or I need different floor plans. This floor plan's not going to work. You know, when you see it in person, your perception is totally different than what you see on a screen. And uh, that's why everybody, you know, that's the first reason why you need to look at it in person. Any, any camper, any RV, fifth wheel, motor home. Doesn't matter. Second reason you need to look at it in person is just to inspect it for yourself. You know, when I give an opinion about the condition it is for the year model and the price, that's my personal opinion. Okay, everybody has an opinion. And and guys, there's no there's no set standard for a grading scale for used RVs because it's all an opinion. Um, granted, I got 25 years of experience. And I've looked at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of used destination trailers to form this opinion. I think this one's nice. I would give it a solid 1 to 10. I'd give it a 9 out of 10. I, I never give anything a 10 out of 10, guys. Not even brand new ones because there's an imperfection somewhere. Um, but I'd give it a 9, nine out of 10. And, and the next person that looks at it may give it a 12 out of 10. The next person that looks at it may give it a 5 out of 10. And I give it a 9 out of 10. And and the bad thing is nobody's right, nobody's wrong. So you need to come look at it for yourself to form your own opinion about 
if this meets your personal standards to be nice enough for you and or your family to buy and use. Third reason you need to come look at it is to form your own inspection. You know, let us know you're coming. We'll move it somewhere where we can plug it into power or we'll hook a bigger generator to it so you can turn on the ACs, check everything out for yourself. And or, and I highly recommend this right here too, guys. Spend a few hundred dollars, hire a third party and professional RV inspector that's unbiased, that has, that's not affiliated with you or us, that will make a list of everything that works and doesn't work on this RV. That way you know what you're getting into before you're obligated to get into it. Um, and that should be any RV you buy, new or used, dealer or for sale by owner. That that should be, that's the best resource in the past 50 years that has ever came out, even over the internet, that has ever came out for RV shoppers or RV inspectors. I think that is a very, very important resource. And I'm probably the only dealer on the internet that recommends that, guys, because I'm here to look out for you, Okay. Whether you buy this one or buy another one from us or buy one from somebody else, guys, I want y'all to make sure that you're protected, you know what you're getting into, because no matter what you buy, there's going to be problems with it. That's part of buying an RV. You can't have this many systems working together to, to do what an RV does without something being faulty, something ceased to work that's going to create a chain reaction of other things not working. Uh, especially if you're going to live in it, guys. You live in one, you're going to be doing repairs from time to time. Uh, even more so than people who use them recreationally. That's the nature of owning an RV. Um, is living in, a, in an RV easier than living in an apartment or a house? No, it's not. It's different. It's got its own unique set of challenges. But is it easier? No. It's a lot easier to rent an apartment rent a house if you're looking for one of these to live in and when something goes wrong pick up your phone call your landlord hey my water heater stopped working let them come out and fix it or or my roof's leaking or you know call your landlord hey you know buying an rv and living in an rv is totally different and um and i'll be honest with you too for those of you wanting to get into rving full time thinking you're going to save money over living in a sticks and bricks home the only way you save money living in one of these is if you've got a piece of land that's paid for or a place that you can park with full hookups that doesn't cost you anything for rent and you leave it there and you never move it. Now, if you're going to be one of those that, like you see on YouTube and stuff, that travels from place to place to place to place and paying fuel, wear and tear, full coverage insurance and all that, you're not going to save money. You're going to spend more living in an RV than you are in a sticks and brick apartment. There's plenty of places in the country you can rent an apartment, even a small home for less of what you're going to spend full-time RVing. You full-time RV for the experience, not for the savings because, like I said, there's really not any. <laughs> Time you figure in buying a truck, paying insurance, financing, or paying cash, the upkeep, the maintenance, the fuel, yeah, and the campgrounds, and it, it's not it's not cheaper trust me but like i said if you own some property just somewhere where you can hook this thing up with hookups it's paid for yeah it, it it might be cheaper to live in this than an apartment but that's the only way or family members is going to let you stay on their property rent free yeah that might be cheaper and i'm not trying to bust anybody's bubble guys because i get asked that constantly on my facebook page Hey, tell me about the pros and cons of full-time RVing. So it's a lot easier for me to tell you that in a video and answer every single day. I get to ask that question multiple times a week about full-time RV because people are getting into it. They have no idea. And, and I'm going to tell you something else too, guys, and this causes a lot of controversy when I say this. But it's the truth. If you do not have recreational experience um, with an RV, a camping in an RV, owning an RV recreationally, don't sell your house and buy an RV the full time with no experience. You're going to make, you, you, you know, you very well may make a very, and this may cost me sales. I know it, guys, but again, I'm watching out for you. This may, you may make a very, very, very expensive mistake because RVing is uh, for a lot of people, but it's not for everyone. And the problem is, you know, I don't recommend full timing unless you've got two or three years of recreational experience as an RV owner. In other words, having an RV, using it on the weekends while you still own your home, taking it to the beach for a week or two, a couple times a year, or whatever. 
because you sell your house, you sell all your stuff that was in your house, you buy an RV and you have no idea how to even operate it. What if you decide a month later that you absolutely can't stand this? You bought this new RV, you sold your house, got rid of all your stuff. Now you got to buy another house, buy all new stuff, sell your RV that you bought brand new that's now it's a used one that you're going to lose your butt on. That could cost you tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands for that mistake. Buy you an older camper, an older RV, recreational camp for a couple of years, then do decide if you want to do selling the home and do the full-time thing. And then sell your camper, trade your camper, buy you, buy you the one that you want to make your full-time home. Um, and I get pegged every time I say that on comments, but I'm telling you the truth from my 25 years of experience. I can't tell you how many customers have bought campers from here that did that, that bought one, no idea what they're doing, sold their home, bought a camper full-time, you know, two, three, six months later, they're calling me. I want to sell this thing back. I hate this. I hate this. I can't stand it. Uh, I thought I'd love living in a camper, but I can't stand it. I have no idea what I'm doing. And and even when people show me, I still have no idea. And, I, and I've hit two or three things with this camper. And I've never towed one of these. Or I've never driven a motor home this long distance. And, you know, I just, I don't know what I was thinking. And, you know. But at the same time, I've had people also say, thank you so much for selling it to me. I'm having the time of my life, too. So, I mean, like I said, I'm not trying to talk anybody out, but I'm just telling you that people, some people love it, some people hate it. That's why you need experience to figure out, but, you know, buy you an older camper, buy you an older motorhome, use it recreationally for a couple of years to find out if RVing is even right for you or not, or not right for you before making that plunge. So, <laughs> you know, I've said this before, it's kind of like, uh, decide waking up one day and, and going, uh, you know, full-time RVing without experience is kind of like uh, waking up one day and deciding, you know what, I had a dream last night. I was an airplane pilot. Never flew a plane in my life and saying, I'm going to fly a plane. So instead of going to flight school, doing all that stuff, getting your pilot's license, getting the flight time to before you're certified to fly a plane, you just go to the nearest airport, jump in an empty plane and start flying and expect to know what you're doing. That's kind of like the same thing as somebody full-time RVing with no RV experience. It just, it's, it trust me, guys, it's a, uh, it's a whole different world. It can be a lot of fun, but there's a lot more to it than what you see on YouTube and, uh, and on social media from other people that do it. Um, they don't tell the whole story. So anyway, ran over <laughs> 39, nine. If you're interested in this camper, give us a call guys. Again, I'm not trying to talk you out of it. I'm just giving you, I guess I'm playing devil's advocate and telling you, there's two sides to every story. So uh, do your research. You know, of course, if you're experienced RV, you know all this stuff. And uh, if you got questions about this camper, you're interested in it, you want to buy it, give us a call. We do have financing available with approved credit and down payment. Again, guys, we can hook you up with a great uh, with a great delivery service that can pretty much do whatever needs to be done to deliver this camper to you. I mean, these guys are awesome. And we'll we'll give you their phone number and uh, email and website information, and uh, you know they can get you a quote on delivery setup, whatever that whatever you need them to do, they can do it. Um. But uh, anyway, thirty nine nine with the major systems inspection, haggle free firm, plus applicable sales tax. We charge no fees. There's no up sales. That's it. Thanks again for watching. Hit that subscribe button, smash me a thumbs up. Stay tuned for some more videos and look forward to seeing you here in beautiful Ringgold, Georgia.